Strategic Living with Brian Holmes, episode number five. Welcome to the program today. This is the Strategic Living Podcast. We are all about transforming minds, developing leaders, and changing nations. You say, that's a haughty goal, that's a haughty motto. Well, I believe with all of my heart that nations can be changed when individuals like you and I are being developed and becoming all that God has called us to be. That's why we're here, to see you healed, your mind renewed, for you to be transformed from the inside out and to discover all that you were created to be. It's going to be an awesome program today. As a matter of fact, I'm just really excited about the content. So just get comfortable, get ready, and let's get started. Well, it's great to have you with us today. This is Brian Holmes, of course, and I have the great pleasure of being your host week in and week out. This is our fifth episode. It seems like we just started this thing yesterday, but man, here we are, episode number five, and I'm sure we're going to blink and it'll be episode number 55. But in the meantime, we're having a great time just talking and dialoguing and learning and growing and being challenged. And this is a real joy for me to be able to come into your life each week and just uh, just be a part of your process, your journey of becoming all that God has really designed you and destined you to be. This week, we're going to be talking about recognizing and navigating seasons of transition again. That's right. Uh, last week, we had part one, and I just, there was so much content, so many things I wanted to share with you. I felt like it would be so helpful if we would just continue this thought process. And last week, I began by sharing with you this this quote by Benjamin Franklin. He said that there is nothing certain in the world except death and taxes. And uh, I'm sure that's probably true, but I believe with all of my heart, another thing you can be certain of is that during your lifetime, you will experience what we are calling transition, and you'll experience that more than once. You see, everything is about seasons. Everything is about times, and uh, life is lived on levels. Life is experienced in stages. And every level requires some tests. Every level requires us letting go of some things and embracing something new. And that's just the way life works. You see, growth requires something dying. That's right. Do you know that in order for your physical body to grow every single day, your skin cells are dying so that new ones can be generated? Uh, That's the way the body was designed. That's the way life is designed it's, it's not that something dies just for the sake of having to grieve over it and be sad about it. It's that it's what the Bible calls the death and the burial and then the resurrection or the new life that comes as a result of the process. It's the circle of life. So in this episode, what I want to do is to explore a few key principles that I feel will help you to recognize these seasons in your life. And it's not... Uh, that you are not aware, but sometimes we don't want to really embrace the the transitions that that need to take place. But we want to help you to recognize these seasons. We want to help you to steward them in a way that not only is successful in the sense of just, well, we succeeded in that one, but I want to see real lasting and good and positive results in your life. And I know that you want to see that as well. So let me start with a scriptural principle. Just going to share with you the same verse of scripture we did last week, just as a jumping off point here. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. And I just want you to know here in parentheses, you have an it. There's something that you were designed to accomplish, something in this life you were created to fulfill. There is a destiny. We've talked about it on the program. So Paul is saying here, I don't regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. I've not arrived. I've not completed my journey. But then he goes on. He says, but one thing I do, I'm forgetting everything that lies behind me and I am reaching forward to what lies ahead. I just sense that in this verse, he's in the middle of transition. He has the opportunity here to reach backward 
or he has the opportunity to reach forward. And right now, it seems as though he's in between what lies behind and what lies ahead. And he's trying to determine, what am I going to do? And he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget what lies behind me. I'm going to reach forward to what lies ahead. And then verse 14 says, I am pressing. I am determined. I am fixed on this goal. And that is the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. What is he saying there? Well, here's the thing. Anytime you are walking with Christ, and I'm speaking under the assumption that those that I'm speaking to today understand that that we are living a life that is not absent of a spiritual directive. We have a God. We have a creator. We have a designer. We have one who is our leader. And if we are submitted to his leadership as we are moving with him, then we are always moving upward. We are always moving forward because he is not a God that is going to pull us backward. It's about growth, development, maturity, progress, success, blessing, line upon line, precept on precept, faith to faith, glory to glory. It's always about progress. So let's talk for a few minutes here today about this. The truth is, is that change is inevitable. So it's not a matter of whether or not change will occur in your life. The question is, what are you going to do with change when it comes knocking at your door? What will you do when you are faced with the opportunity to continue in the path you're on now with the results you presently experience? Some would call that a rut. Or to... Uh, make adjustments, make changes, make new choices, and to potentially grow and to develop and to experience greater prosperity and peace and joy and fulfillment. What are you going to do when change comes and says, hey, here's your opportunity? You see, transition is something that we all experience in life. It is inevitable. And transition really, as I mentioned last week, transition is that place between the way things used to be, and the way things are becoming. It's the place between how things have always been and potentially how God would like for them to be in our life. It's that place in between. It's the blank page between two chapters in the book. Many times, transition is calling us to uncharted territory. You see, it's not where you have been. But it's also not the full expression yet of where you are going. It's just this place called between. So let's talk about transition. What is transition? As I was really looking into this even more this week, I came across an incredible article about transition, and it was on a website, and I'm going to reference that in your show notes so that you have uh, a reference, and they do get credit for this. But let me just share a few things that came from that. It says... Concerning transition, in the simplest terms, transition is change. In a broader sense, however, transitions are life's way of asking us to re-examine our present way of being. These transitions can be predictable, such as a child leaving for college or maybe getting married. But transitions can also be unpredictable, such as the sudden death of a loved one or a traumatic accident, or some other type of trauma in someone's life. Whatever the degree or intensity of the event, every transition we experience has one thing in common. It forces us to make changes to our existing life. And with change comes resistance. A major life transition literally closes one chapter of our life and starts a new one putting us in a new place and direction that we have not walked before. It is often a very difficult adjustment, and as we endure intense feelings of fear and doubt and uncertainty, we have to walk through this. Transitions typically mark an ending followed by a time of self-reflection, which hopefully leads to a new beginning or a new outlook on life. Every life transition asks us to let go of a past way of thinking or doing. And by doing so, 
we are given the opportunity to replace the old way of being with something new. During the transitional period, however, we usually feel uncomfortable, always disconnected with our environment and even ourselves. While this is natural to some extent, if you can't move through this phase, these feelings can often overwhelm you, sending you spinning out of control into emotional turmoil. Many times, people turn to drugs or alcohol as a way to numb the anxiety and stress of these transitional times. Admittedly, life isn't always fair, but often the good comes out of whatever seems at the time to be a completely overwhelming experience. Whatever the transition, counseling with a professional counselor or having a life coach or someone in your life is an excellent opportunity to help you take stock of your life and move forward into your new beginning with less pain and with less resistance. Transitions are difficult because we unconsciously or sometimes even consciously resist change. As humans, it seems like every fiber of our being is innately programmed to resist anything new or anything unknown to us, most likely a result of our basic self-preservation instinct. Whether we realize it or not, even good changes, positive changes, wonderful God-ordained changes can cause us to feel stressed and uneasy and many times extremely uncomfortable. On some level, we are simply not comfortable with the unknown. That article, that's an excerpt from an article that I took from a website called TheraRive. That's T-H-E-R-A-R-I-V-E dot com. And I'm just so grateful for their input. I found that to be very, very helpful. And I hope you found that to be helpful as well. Let me just talk about this from my perspective now. There are countless ways that we experience transition. Some of these are are very small and uneventful and, and seem to be a little easier to navigate. And then others are literally monumental and extremely challenging. And sometimes when we're going through these phases of transition, we might even be at a place of simply waiting for days and weeks, months, even years. And uh, I know the waiting game can be excruciating. I've been there. Last week, we mentioned a few of the areas that one might experience transition in, and I'm sure you recall what those are, but if you're listening for the first time, let me just share a few of those with you. Uh, You know, the growing up process, this would be high school, transitioning from high school to college, uh, getting married, having kids, becoming a parent. Uh, Another area of transition that I find very interesting is the parental transition, and for me, that means uh, what happens to p- to parents as their children begin to grow up and then leave home? I'm experiencing this one right now. Massive transition. This one's been a very difficult one for us. But, you know, when roles begin to change and, and life begins to move forward. And by the way, as the old song says, time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. And so it is our responsibility and really our life depends on our, our ability to move forward with the time. But what happens with parents as they transition? Uh, You know, career changes, job changes. Uh, Maybe if you're a business owner, your business transitioning from one season to the next. Ministry. There's just, there's a thousand different areas in which we can experience transition. Relationships is a huge one. This involves romantic relationships as children, young people, marriage, divorce, the loss of a loved one, or the being estranged from a family member because of conflict. All these things are transitions. And so you see that there's just so many areas where we can experience these. Each of those areas, each of the major categories, could really have hundreds of embedded uh, transitional places within them. But irrespective of the genre of transition you may be experiencing right now, I want to give you today some keys that I really feel strongly will help you to navigate through transition successfully. These principles, I believe, will help you to recognize, identify, and properly steward this window of time that we're calling transition. And I really feel as though if we'll implement these on a day-to-day basis, you'll see that they will yield a great fruitful result that God intends for you to experience. So 
Tony Robbins said this. He said, change is inevitable, but progress is optional. Change is inevitable, but progress is optional. It's true. Things are going to change. Whether or not we move with that change and grow through that change is up to us entirely. So if you're aware, you can take notes. Great. If not, these are going to be available in the show notes for you after this episode is posted. But let me just give you today seven keys for successfully navigating through seasons of transition. Seven keys for successfully navigating through seasons of transition. Number one, learn to recognize when something's season has come to an end. Learn to recognize when something's season has come to an end. You say, what are you talking about? Well, you know, we start out strong, and many times when something is brand spanking new, we're really pumped up and excited about it. And after a while, it loses its pizzazz. It, it begins to not be so exciting anymore. Those kind of things. But here are some, some key things that I would encourage you to look for under that heading of learning to recognize when something season has come to an end. Number one, is there still passion in that for you? Do you experience fulfillment in that or is it unfulfilling? When you are engaged in that relationship, that job, that career, that, that activity, does it still bring you joy and excitement? Can you feel your heart being encouraged and, and lifted when you're involved in that activity or that relationship? Here's a key one. Is what you're doing fruitful? Now, this is all still under learning to recognize when something season has come to an end. Is it fruitful? Is it producing real results, real benefits in your life? Number three under that heading, is the relationship in question, if it's a relationship, is that relationship still mutually beneficial or are you the only one giving now? Is there an area where you are limiting your forward and upward progress? Is there, is, is what you're doing limiting your movement forward? Are you stuck? Are you in a rut? Are you bogged down? Or if not, maybe you're moving forward. But these are ways to recognize if something season has come to an end. All right, number two out of our seven keys, embrace change. Embrace change. Under that heading, I'd like to give you a few examples of how we do that. Number one, I want to encourage you, grieve, grieve, grieve. It's okay to grieve concerning the end of a season. It's okay. Grieve for a minute, <laughs> but get excited about the new thing. Get excited about the new chapter that's unfolding. And I'm going to just tell you, I'll be a little vulnerable with you right here, but uh, as I've mentioned before already on this program, my son, my firstborn child, Christian Holmes, is about to leave us. Literally from the day I'm recording this podcast, it's six days from today, he will be leaving our home, and I'm sure it'll be for good. He'll be heading off to college in Abilene, Texas, and he'll be living on campus there, and no longer will he be a part of my day-to-day -day life in the home context. And I'm telling you, this is a monster transition for my wife, for my daughter, and for myself. It is something that I don't know that anyone could have prepared us for the weightiness and the emotional heaviness that it brings to our heart because while we are tremendously excited for him and while we completely trust not only his mind and his heart in moving on to this season, but we also trust that God's word concerning his life will be fulfilled and we know he's going to do fine. All those things are, are great. No questions about that, but nobody prepared me for what my heart would have to deal with. It's, it's an enormous, enormous thing. But here's the thing. I can I'm going to grieve. There's no question. I next Wednesday, which is the 21st of August 2013, as we drive away from Hardin Simmons University in Abilene, Texas, I'm sure for the the 3 hours drive home and then the days and the weeks and probably even months afterwards, there's going to be some some phenomenal moments of just crying and weeping and and missing and all those things. That's that's normal. It's natural to grieve over a previous season. But here's my thing. I cannot stay in that place. 
I have to be able, as I said last week, to bury that thing. And But here's the thing. The burying is not the end result. You bury a seed in the ground only for it to bring a harvest in the next season. So I know that even though one season of my relationship with Christian has come to an end, that is his childhood, what's coming now is the the fun and the excitement of watching him grow as a man, watching him learn and watching him to de- be developed as a disciplined young man and a, a competent young man and an educated young man. But more importantly, you know, down the road as life develops, you know, there's going to come a day, I'm sure, when he's bringing a girlfriend home and, he, and he's going to say, Dad, I need you to meet somebody. And and, and I, he's going to walk in the door and then he's going to say, oh, by the way, Dad, we're getting married. And then I'm going to have a daughter-in-law. And then God help us. We're going to have grandkids. But you know what's great about that is that's the next season. And so I can either grieve over the previous season or I can be full of joy and full of gratitude for all of the wonderful blessings of that season. And then I can begin to look forward now to what lies ahead, as Paul said. I've got to, I've got to move on. I cannot arrest this process. I have to grieve. I have to process through the transition. But then what I need to do now is fixate my mind and my heart on what lies ahead because it's all good. It's all beautiful. And that's point B to embracing change. Set your sights on what is ahead. Set your, if, if all you look at every day is the obituary of this thing, this season that is behind you, <laughs> And, and all you do is, is be completely consumed with grieving over what used to be, then you're going to miss this whole, the whole point of transition. The point of transition is to get you to another place. So you have to set your sight on what is ahead. And then point C under embracing change is know that change, properly handled and properly stewarded, produces growth and progress which in turn produces new opportunities and prosperity and blessing. So grieve for a minute, but set your sights on what is ahead and then process through this season of change because new opportunities will reveal themselves. So number one, learn to recognize when something season has come to an end. Number two, embrace change. Number three, let go of the past. Let go of the past. I'm going to spend some time here because this is important for some of us. What are you talking about, Brian? Let go of the past. Well, you know what? If you're breathing and you can fog up a mirror, then most of what I'm about to share with you probably applies. We have to let go of past hurts. We have to let go of past disappointments. We have to let go of past relationships, past failures, We have to be willing to even walk away from past trophies, trophies of a previous season, past wins, even past successes. You say, what are you talking about? Look, we build on past successes, past wins. Those are monumental moments that that create confidence. They garner uh, a testimony of God's grace and his blessing on our life and all those things, and we are always thankful. We don't forget what has been by way of success, but we cannot live in the past. We have to let go of the past so that we can go on to new success, new wins, accomplish new things. And under letting go of the past, I want to share with you that you have to forgive and release those who in the past have somehow hurt your heart, who have violated you, who have caused you pain, you have to forgive them and release them because holding on to unforgiveness, holding on to bitterness, holding on to anger and resentment, all of those things literally anchor you to the present. They will not allow you to move forward. Last week we received a call, I believe it was from Kevin, and his question was, how does forgiveness play a role in the transition process. And I want to tell you something. There's not a human being alive that hasn't experienced some level of disappointment or hurt. Uh, There's probably not a human being alive that at some point in their life, a relationship uh, hasn't failed them in some way. There's not a human being alive that I'm aware of that hasn't failed in some form or fashion or come short 
of reaching the objective or the goal. We, we, we're all humans, but I cannot allow my heart and my mind and my spirit man to be consumed with or locked into anything from the past. Paul said it like this. I have to forget the past. I have to forget the past. And not just forget it. I have to let go. I have to release it. I cannot hold to it. Because to hold to it is to limit my movement. I cannot be anchored to a tree and expect that I can walk a mile. No, as long as I am chained to that tree and I'm holding on to that tree, whatever progress might be available to me, I am forfeiting that because I am unwilling to let go of what I'm anchored to. And I'm speaking to someone today who is literally dealing with father issues. Your father wasn't there for you. Your father abandoned you and your mom. And uh, maybe, maybe your dad never affirmed you and said, son, I'm really proud. I love you, man. You're, I'm just, you're doing an awesome job in your life. Uh, maybe, maybe that first person you married or had that relationship with, maybe they, they cheated on you and they violated the covenant that they made with you and that, that damaged your heart. Maybe you went out there and took a massive risk in the business world and you said, I'm going to do this thing. I've got an idea. And maybe that thing fell apart and you fell flat on your face. Maybe you failed. I'm here today to tell you, let go. You have to walk away from all of that if you're going to have what God has for you in this next season. What were you talking about, Brian, past trophies? You know what? I give this uh, this speech that I, I do quite often when I travel. I talk about trophies of a previous season, and on many occasions, I'll literally bring out, I have in my attic, at my home, all a lot of trophies that I garnered over the years of junior high, high school, basketball. I was a basketball guy. And, uh, you know, I've got awards and certificates from all kinds of classes and things I've been to, and I've got licenses and all of these types of things. And, and you know, every one of those were a stepping stone to an, another place in my life. But here's my thing. If I, if I decorated my, my office or my, my bedroom at home with all these trophies and I just simply, I allowed my identity to be wrapped up in all the things that I've done before, then I would literally retard my growth process. I would cease to grow, cease to develop, and I would cease to be moving forward because I would have, as Paul said, I would have assumed that I've arrived. I have all these wonderful trophies to prove what a great life I've lived, but yet, man, there's so much more for me just ahead if I am not fixated on trophies from a previous season. So you have to let go of the past. Number four. Identify the opportunities. You see, our default mechanism is to focus on what has been instead of what can be. And here's the reason why, very simply, as far as I'm concerned, we have a reference point to what has been. We've got the memory bank. We've got the feelings, the emotions, the, the, all of the, the events that took place, the people that were there. We have the relationship connections, and all of that is a part of this matrix of the reference point that we have with our past. And so many times, even when given a beautiful new opportunity, we are referencing the new thing against the old thing. And many times in doing that, what we're doing is, is that we are looking at a brand new opportunity through the eyes of an old system. And so in this process of transition, I cannot be stuck in the past, I have to look for the new opportunities, new relationships, a new career path, a new business opportunity, new circles of friends and associates, new levels of prosperity and wealth, new ideas, all of these things. I have to be disciplined in my searching because I'm not looking for an ambiguous, I hope something good happens to me kind of a deal. I am, my radar is on, my antennas are up, and I am searching out the opportunities that God has already put in front of me. They're there. I just have to open my eyes and I have to be looking to the future. So identify the opportunities. Number five, concentrate on growth areas. 
Concentrate on growth areas. Everything that you've learned to this point in your life has served you to this point in your life. I'm going to say it again. Everything that you've learned in your life to this point has served you in your life to this point. But anytime I am coming into a place of new opportunities and areas where the rewards and the benefits are greater than anything I've experienced to this point, when the money's bigger, when the stages are bigger, when the contracts are bigger, when the business is bigger, when, when the next season is designed to be greater and bigger and larger and fuller and more satisfying, then it stands to reason that there may be areas in my personal life that I will have to focus on so that I might qualify or grow into the capacity necessary to succeed on this next level. You see, what was, what was really excellent on the previous level of your life Once you transition to the new level, what was excellent on the previous level becomes mediocre at best. And so I've got to up my game. So I have to concentrate on growth areas. What do I need to know? What knowledge do I need to acquire? Do I need to go take a class? Do I need to enroll in a seminar? Is there a conference I need to attend uh, that specifically deals with and equips me and helps me to become more of what I need to be in order to, to really steward this new season? What resources do I need to pursue? Relationships, maybe? Uh, Maybe money? Maybe investors? What do I need to do to focus on growing my resource pool for this new area? What areas of my life require personal development? Hey, you know what? In my last season, I was pretty loosey-goosey with my time, and I, it, there wasn't a lot of demand. I didn't have to be super organized, or, or I didn't really have to, to have a lot of discipline because, you know, everything just kind of came to me pretty natural. But in this new place, this new realm that I've, I've come into now, now I have to develop some time management skills. I've got to get some systems in place where I can organize my projects. I've got to get some help around me, some people that I can, can hold me accountable to certain things. So what new disciplines must I acquire? Where do I need to grow? What growth areas can I identify? And how can I concentrate on those growth areas for this new season? Number six, make a commitment to your future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and plans to give you hope and a future. So there is a future that already has your name on it. There is a future waiting for you that God has already determined. And so God's committed to your future. You have to be committed to your future. Often I use this analogy in hotel rooms every once in a while. I'll land up on a a channel where they're playing Texas Hold'em Poker. I've never played a game of poker in my life. I'm not saying that as a religious thing. I'm just saying I've never been much of a game player. But it intrigues me to watch these guys, man. And it just just is fascinating to me to watch the strategies and the the gamesmanship and the the sunglasses and the hats on backwards and all the things that go with that. But one of the things that I love to see, and it's just always spoken to me, is when a guy will take his, his two thumbs, put them together with his palms out and open, and he'll put that that shovel as it were in front of or behind his chips and he will shove his entire stack of chips into the middle of the table and he'll say I'm all in. I'm all in. And that's what I'm saying to you on number 6 here. Commit to your future. Go all in. Be all the way in. Don't hold anything back. Don't reserve anything. Don't don't hedge your bets, man. Just get all your chips on the table and say I have a future. I'm going for my future. My past is my past, but what lies ahead is a good thing. I'm going for it. Go all in. And the last of these seven keys, number seven, is this. Trust in the Lord because he really does make all things new. What do you mean, Brian? There is something to say about allowing the future that God has for you to to manifest in your life But in order for that to really happen, as I mentioned to you last week, you have to walk by faith and not by sight. 
I have to really develop the skill and the ability and the discipline of listening for his voice, knowing his voice, hearing his voice, and most importantly, following his voice. Because if I can subject and submit my heart to his leadership, then what happens is, is that he will lead me to green pastures. He will lead me. He will, he's not going to lead me into the ditch. He's going to lead me to a place of prosperity and blessing and hope and, and all the good things that a good father longs for his children to have. I've got to trust in him, trust in his plans. I've got to have this confidence that he will never leave me or forsake me. I also have to know that my past is behind me, and as far as he's concerned, it doesn't even exist. And I also have to know that my future is secure in him. Remember, change is inevitable. Progress is optional. I trust that's helped you today, and I really encourage you to to jump onto our website and leave your comments. Engage us in conversation, and as people are beginning to touch with us there, I really believe we're going to develop a phenomenal community of people that will sharpen each other, challenge each other, encourage each other to become all that God's called you to be. I want to leave you with this today. I am experiencing transition in my own life on a scale that I've never experienced before. Numerous areas in my life. It's like all at once several things are happening and and it's like multiple streams converging and there's this massive river that's formed and the pressure, the current. Uh, it just seems as though sometimes it's not navigatable. But here's what I'm learning. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. At 46 years old, I can say with great assurance that today, more than ever before, I'm learning how to lean on him because he is the author, he is the finisher, he is the beginning, he is the end. And everything that I am or ever will be, it's already present with him. And so I'm just walking this out day by day, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Do not lose hope. Do not be weary in well-doing. Do not throw in the towel just because this transition place seems to be more than you can bear. I want to share with you right now that just on the other side of what seems to be unbearable is blessing and life, prosperity, hope, a new season. It's going to be good. Let me tell you what's coming next week. I am so excited about next week because we're going to be bringing you our very first interview. And we're going to be discussing dreams, possibilities, and the promise of hope. Dreams, possibilities, and the promise of hope. You will not want to miss this episode. And I'm going to be welcoming my very first guest on the program here, author, speaker, life coach, executive coach, Ms. Sharonda Scott. She's written a wonderful, wonderful new book called A Pocket Full of Possibilities, and we're going to be talking about her book, but because of the relationship that we have, I'm sure we're going to get off on all kinds of wonderful things that will be a great help to you, a great blessing to you. So I want to encourage you, go to brianholmes.com and leave your questions concerning transition, and specifically for next week's program, Dreams, Possibilities, and the Promise of Hope. I, I hope you'll go there and leave us some input, and we're going to look forward to conversing with you next week. Well, that sound means it's time for a few little announcements here. And uh, a lot of great things going on around the Brian Holmes world. So let me just share some of those with you right now. We've got a couple of more weeks before I leave for Romania. And I am so excited about this particular trip. As you know, I've been traveling around the world for a number of years. It's been a great privilege of mine to to speak into the lives of people in 18 different countries. And uh, Romania, Eastern Europe, happens to be one of my favorite places to go. And I believe September the 3rd, I leave, and I'll be returning on the 11th. But during my time there, we're going to be pouring into the lives of hundreds of leaders. Uh, Probably, I say hundreds. 100 to 150 leaders on average for four straight days, five straight days. We'll be just pouring in, teaching them, training them, coaching them, 
to become more of what God really wants them to be. And here's the thing. It's wonderful to go to a place where people are really hungry for what you have to offer. And that's the kind of field we're going into there. I'm telling you, these guys would sit for 24 hours in a day and just listen. So it just it's so encouraging to be able to pour into folks that are so desirous of equipping and change and, and things. So I want to encourage you to be a part of this. Go to brianholmes.com forward slash Romanian dash leaders or right there on the homepage. You'll see a, a post and or a graphic about this. We need your help. It cost us $150 per leader. So we're looking at for a, a budget of about $15,000 to make this trip happen. We pay for the these leaders to uh, be transported from their city to the venue, wherever that might be. We pay for their meals, for their accommodations, for all their materials. And it's it's a phenomenal place to invest and to sow seed. So I encourage you to be a part of that with us. It would be so, so helpful if you would do so. Also, if you would like to have us speak at your event, at your conference, maybe at your uh, corporation, or certainly at your church, or whatever the, the seminar might be, go to brianholmes.com forward slash speaking. We have information there about how we can connect with you on that level. I would be so honored to come and serve you or your organization in any way we could along that line. Lastly, we have our certified professional coach training that will be coming up the end of September, September the 20th and 21st. That is a live class on a Friday and a Saturday right here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you have ever wanted to become a certified life coach, executive coach, business coach, maybe a fitness coach, whatever you feel like your niche is, if you want to receive a designation, credentials to function in that way, whether for hire or whether just to be a blessing to people, this is the training you need to attend. Also, we do this same training one-on-one. We also do it in groups, and we do those online. And so if you'd like to, if you're not able to make it to Dallas during September for the training, but you'd like to contact us about getting trained, give me a call. I'd be happy to talk to you about it, and I think it'll be a, a very good thing for your life and for those that you are designed to touch as well. So last couple of things here. I'd love for you to go to our website, subscribe to our weekly updates. We have a beautiful email that goes out once a week. Uh, sometimes we, we do two updates a week. But we're just making sure you have all the information about the the blog post, about the podcast, the Monday Mastery segments we're putting out there, and any other opportunities about our speaking engagements. They're all going to be right there on this update. So subscribe to our updates. Also, subscribe to our podcast via iTunes or whatever RSS feed you uh, uh, subscribe through. And share this with all of your friends. If this podcast is touching your life, if somehow it's being a help to you, it's it's assisting you in your journey, I'm asking you to share this on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+. Uh, there's so many out there, I can't even keep up with them all right now. But just put this out there. Help us to get the word out about what is happening with the Strategic Living Podcast. Well, again, I trust that something we've shared today has challenged you to pursue God's very, very best for your life. If you'd like to comment on this episode, please go to brianholmes.com, go to the show notes for the episode, and scroll down to the comment section. We really, really want to hear from you. Also, I would be so grateful if you would go and rate our podcast on iTunes. This helps us tremendously. Really, if you'd like to leave a comment there or a review there, that'd be even better. But in any case, it helps us to get the word out. It gives us greater recognition in the various rankings within iTunes. And more importantly, it just helps us to, to uh, be visible to people that may not know that we're here for them. So go to iTunes and rate us if you would, please. That'd be such a great, great help. Well, this is our fifth episode, and we're so grateful you're hanging with us. Until next time, we want you to remember this. You are made in the image and the likeness of God. You're designed for a wonderful and powerful purpose, and you're destined for greatness. Whatever you're going through today, whatever season you find yourself in, whatever challenges you're facing right now, just know this. The sun's coming up tomorrow. It's not over. It's just beginning. And whatever you're going through, you will make it through. God is your strength. God is your source. You have friends and people around you to help you and to encourage you. We want to see you get there because you are absolutely in the palm of his hands. Until next time, God bless.